Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Rich. And obviously, we're not able to come to you as we normally do in a regular format with all of this coronavirus and what's going on. We're not able to have service. But we certainly wanted to get into the Word of the Lord. We wanted to sing just a little bit to bring some kind of encouragement to you. And, and let's just focus in on the Lord here today. So uh, Cynthia is going to come and she's going to lead us in a worship song. And so let's just worship the Lord and then we're going to get into the word of the Lord. So God bless. Thank you, Cynthia. We certainly appreciate that. And that's really what I uh, want to focus on here today as I uh, talk to all of us a little bit. 
And I really want to talk about the majesty of God, how big, how great God is. And I'm referring to the 40th chapter of Isaiah. And I'm only going to read just certain verses, the ones that I'm going to focus upon. But certainly the entire chapter is worthy of our consideration. And I, uh, I challenge you to go ahead and read all of it. But I'm going to start there in verse 1, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 1. And listen to what, what the Lord is saying to Isaiah to the children of Israel for the prophet to speak to them during that time. He says, comfort you, comfort you, my people saith your God. And then I want to skip down to verse 10. Behold, the Lord will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. Going on down to verse 12. Who hath measured the waters? Now, the who, obviously, he's talking about the Lord. So he's referring back that the Lord has measured the waters in the hallow of his hand. And he's meted out the heaven with a span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in the scales and the hills in a battle. Balance. Skipping down to verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. Now skipping down to verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high and behold who hath created these things that bringeth out the host by number. He calls them all by names by the greatness of his might for that he is strong and power and not one faileth. Skipping down to verse 28 and then 29. Have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and to them that has no might, he increases Strength. Praise God. The majesty of God. Did you notice here how that the Lord speaks to Isaiah? And first of all, he says, Isaiah, I want you to comfort my people. Comfort them. Comfort them. And somehow I imagine in this Time that we're all facing now with this corona virus and and so many things that have shut down some individuals working at home children not at school I would imagine that somebody needs to be comforted I believe that somebody needs to be encouraged and so today in our own little way I'd like to come and and I'd like to put my hand on your shoulder and I'd like to say to you, I'd like to console you and say, you know what? In the midst of it all, everything's going to be okay. I would like to also uh, to just reassure you that everything's going to work out in the end. God is in control. I'd like to bring a little bit of joy into your soul soul and your heart and your life because I know that the way that our lives 
and that which uh, uh, we've gone through, the same old, same old, and our routine has been turned on its head. And I also know that some are fearful. There's angst, anxiety, maybe depression, oppression. And so I, I want to just encourage you here today. And I want to try to bring a little bit of joy to your heart. Now, the way that God is going to encourage and bring comfort to the children of Israel is the same way that I want to bring comfort to you today. And that is what he does. He takes things that are overwhelming to the entire nation of Israel. He takes individual things that when they stand beside them compared to them, they are so overshadowed that the children of Israel are as nothing. And these things can do, um, uh, and these entities can do whatever they want against them, and Israel would have no power. But then God says, I want you to take those things of which you have absolutely no power and compared to them, you would be as nothing. I want you then to take those things and compare them to me. Now, those things that overwhelm us, when we compare them to God, God overwhelms them. They are as if they are nothing. God completely overshadows them. And so here today in the midst of maybe the fear and the anxieties over so many things that our nation and really the world is facing, I want to get our mind off of all of that. And I want us to focus for just a little while here on how great God is, how big God is. So regardless of how big and impossible and uh, maybe not much hope there that you feel as what you're up against. I want you to know that it is as nothing to God and he is able to take care of it in a second, in a split second, in a moment's time. The first thing here that God compares himself to and really to Israel, the first thing is his creation. We see that in verse 12. Now listen to what he says about himself. He says there that who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. In other words, what he's saying that you and I, if we were to take a couple of teaspoons and we were of water and we would pour them into the hollow of our hand, I would dare say that it's going to run over the side. But you see, what he's saying about God is God holds the Atlantic Ocean. He holds the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Arctic Ocean. He holds all of the large fresh water lakes such as those here in the States and around the world. The Mediterranean Sea, the Sea of Galilee. He holds the Jordan River. Yeah, yeah, close to us here, the Mississippi River. And he also holds the water in the creek that runs by your house. So you see this whole hydrosphere, not only of the waters that we're able to see, but that which is in the atmosphere and ready to fall as rain here upon the earth. That subterranean underneath neath the earth. So the whole hydrosphere of this earth, God is able to hold in the hot and measure in the hollow of his hand and not one drop drops over the side. You, you can get in and I know there's different measurements, but the hydrosphere that they estimate is 327 plus million cubic miles. I can't even get my mind around that. It also says as far as the weight of all that water at one time would be 1,411 times 
10 to the 15th power. That is that number with 15 zeros at the end. That's how much it weighs. And yet God is able to hold it in the hollow of his head. Let me tell you, my friend, today that, that yeah, we may be overwhelmed by what's going on around us, but I'm telling you that God, this situation is as nothing to God. Then he goes on and as he compares himself and us to Israel and we are as humans are so vastly overshadowed, overwhelmed by it that in comparison we don't even register as anything. He said not only meets out the heaven with uh, in the hollow or meets out the waters rather in the hollow of his head, but he meets out the heaven with a span. In other words, he's able to measure the heavens in a span. The span is referring to the span of a person's hand, whether from the thumb to the uh, pinky finger or maybe the index or middle finger, uh, depending. But anyway, for an average sized individual, that's going to be about nine inches. So we're able to measure something nine inches and yet the Bible says God is able to measure out the heavens with the span of his hand. One hand, he's able to do it. Now, once again, when you begin to think about the measurement and the distance of the heavens. We know that in this atmosphere, there are different spheres as you get higher. And they're really counting those that are still under the gravitational pull of the earth. And that, that's about 65 miles. And then you get higher and in outer space. And the way that they explain or define outer space, it is that space in the heavens that goes outwardly and upwardly indefinitely. In other words, we've never even been to the end of it. We can't measure it because we've never even seen and nobody, it goes indefinitely. Maybe to give us a little bit of an idea as well, Neptune, which is the farthest out planet in our solar system, they say that it's close to three trillion miles away. I, I, I don't even know how to how to wrap my mind around that. And let's get to something a little bit smaller. They say from Los Angeles, California to New York City that it's right in between 24 and 2,500 miles. And so when you think about it, that we can only measure nine, nine inches but God is able to measure into infinity with the span of his hand. And let me tell you that if God is that big and if God is that power to hold the hydrosphere, I'm telling you, be encouraged, be comforted today. Our God is going to see us through. Our God is able to to take care. Now, I got to move on because there in verse 12, as he continues, there's one more thing that I want to touch upon. He says there that not only can he hold, uh, he's that powerful, not only is he that big that he can measure out the heavens, but you put both of them together, he's that big and that powerful, it says, and he's able to comprehend the dust of the earth in a measure. Now that word there, that, that in a measure, literally it refers to a third part. And so a lot of people, they look at it as a third of a container that they would use for measurement and a third of that, that God's able to do it. But somebody else said, and, and here's what I like, is they said a third part that it refers to a person's thumb and the two fingers, the index finger and the middle finger. You know, you folks that, that uh, cook, if you want some salt, a pinch of salt, what do you do? You, you pinch it and then, or maybe some other herb that you're using, a pinch. 
two pinches. So a pinch is the three fingers. And he's saying that God is able to hold all of the dust that makes up this planet between his thumb and his two fingers. Now we know, we know God is a spirit. And these are just ways of for us to understand uh, God in a human way, to gain a better understanding of him because he's infinite and he is spirit. So think about that, that this, this earth, they, they say that the weight and the mass of the earth is 6.5 times 10 to the 22nd power. So that's a 6 and a 5 with 22 zeros behind it. And it says that God is able to pinch all of that dust up and not leave one behind, but simply with his three, two fingers and his thumb. How great is our God? How wonderful is our God? Uh, let, me, let me hurry on here because he says, Comfort my people, Isaiah. And so the things that brings fear into their heart, show them how much bigger I am than that fear. So whatever our fears may be, and I, I know that some individuals, it's not just that we're home and the kids are home and and uh, but I know that financially uh, some have not working as much or uh, working at all and, and so I know there's financial concerns the stock markets up and down I, I know there's there's so many concerns and so many fears but let me just say it again how great is our God the majesty now not only does he compare himself and Israel to creation, but he also does countries, or rather, as it says here, nations. And that's in verse 15. He said, behold, the nations are a drop of the bucket, not a drop in the bucket, but they are a drop of the bucket. You see, Israel, down through their history, is, has always been battling with somebody. You know, it started out in Egypt, and then later there were the Philistines that they were grappling with seemingly all the time. And then the Assyrian captivity, and then the Babylonian captivity. So when, when each and every just one of these nations were at their height, they had a lot more troops, a lot more people, they had a lot more firepower. And even when you take the whole nation of Israel, they they were so overwhelmed by this nation. But God says, okay, you and several of you, the nation is are overwhelmed by one. But he said, here's what, what we're going to do. We're going to take all of those nations. We're going to group them all of together and we're going to make one big military. We're going to make one big huge nation. And think of then the power that they would have over you. But he said, let's compare then those nations to me. To me. He said, they're a drop of the bucket. Here's the idea. You see, in that day, somebody go to the well and they wanted to get some water. They had their bucket and they would let it down into the well with a rope. And the bucket is going to have to tip and it's going to have to be immersed completely into the water. And then when you pull it up, it's going to be full and there's going to be all kind of drops of water on the side of it. But when the individual would bring the bucket up, they don't hold the bucket up and try to catch every one of those drops and put them back in. Because you see what the Lord is saying in, in the scheme of things of getting a bucket of water, that drop on the side of the bucket is so insignificant, it doesn't really count. You don't need it. 
And so that's what he's saying about all of these nations. In fact, if you go down to verse 17, I didn't read it, but listen to what the Lord says here. He said, all nations before him, before God, they are as nothing. Wow. And they are counted to him less than nothing. How can you be less than nothing? And so here's the point that these nations that Israel lived in fear of. And they could imagine all kind of horrible things. But yet God said, they're so insignificant, they don't even measure. They are absolutely no threat to God. They may be a tremendous threat to you. And this coronavirus, it may and is a threat to all of us. But let me tell you something. It's not a threat to God. He is so much bigger than what it, is, what, what it is. And so he goes on and he says there in 15, not only as a drop in the bucket, but notice they are counted as the small dust on the balance. So you have this balance and God says, I want you to take every nation Every one of them. I want you to take the United States. I want you to take China. I want you to take North Korea. I want you to take the United Kingdom. I want you to take every nation on the face of the earth. Make them into one superpower. Combine all of their military might. And God said you put them on the scale. And it doesn't even alter. It doesn't. It doesn't even register. You see, the dust on the balance, what he's talking about, you may not be able to see, and it doesn't affect, it doesn't register. But if you were to get a magnifying glass or whatever, you're going to find particles of dust on the balance. But here's what he's saying. Compared to God, all of this superpower, one nation, if you combine them all, they don't even register. It wouldn't even tip God out of balance. Maybe you and I are walking the floor. Maybe we're wringing our hands, but God's not in his throne walking the floor and wringing his hands and say, wow, I've been able to bring my people through uh, everything up until now, but boy, this, this this coronavirus has got me stumped. No, a thousand times no. God is greater than it doesn't even register compared to God. He says something else here and then I'll, I'll move on. He said, he taketh up the aisles as a very small thing. The Isles would be the nations as well that he's referring to, maybe in uh, different parts, maybe close to the sea. But, but nonetheless, the Isles, he said that he is able to take them up. And literally what is referring to, I got me a little uh, fuzzy here in my hand. And what he is saying is that that God is able to take all of these nations and he doesn't have to blow a hurricane. He doesn't have to do any of that to take them up or to blow them away is which is what it's referring to. But it's as if that dust. And so, you know, even me, how much of an effort do I have to have and it's gone. That's how the nations are to God. He doesn't, it's nothing just by virtue of him talking, by virtue of his word. In fact, that's how he's going to do it when all the nations become one uh, at the end of the, the tribulation period and that uh, epic battle of Armageddon by, by his word. So, so much greater than. Let me, let me move on very quickly and I'm going to bring this to a close. Uh, not only does God compare Israel and himself to his own creation, but he also does it with countries, these, these nations. Now, the third thing in verse 26 is he compares them to the uh, constellations, 
to the stars, the starring star groups that are in the heavens. You see what he said in verse 26, lift up your eyes on high and behold who has created these things. What is he talking about? That bringeth their host by number. And then he says, he calls them all by names by the greatness of his might. He's talking about the stars. He called them into being. And do you know that God, not only is he so powerful, is he so big, but he's so intelligent that he not only knows how many stars there are out there in heaven, but he has named each and every one of them. And he's able to call them out uh, individually by their names. How many multitudes of thousands are there that God? And then he goes on and he says, by the greatness of his might, he calls them by names. He knows how many there are. And he said that uh, he, he is strong in power and not one faileth. What he's saying, not one of these stars falls. So not only is God created, but he's keeping everything in its symmetry. He's keeping everything, even though in close proximity and the slightest uh, alteration would uh, bring a, a worldwide a catastrophic event. So who is it that keeps all of these moving parts moving on a daily basis and with the sky and with the stars and the moon and the sun and it's so precise we set our dates and our time by it what God is saying I not only created it but I keep it going in precision and not one falls fails it continues to go forward so what I'm simply saying here today that God is so great Let's not be in despair. Let's not be in fear. Let's not uh, allow fear to dictate who we are. We as Christians through the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are greater than that. And so folks here at Mascuda First Assembly of God, I want you to know that Cynthia and I love you so much. We are honored to be your pastor. And, and even in the middle of this, I want to bring this encouragement to you. So whatever's going on in that mind of yours and the devil, he's going to try to make hay during this time. And he's trying to breed fear into your heart, bring you to your knees or, or to lay you out on the flat of your back, whether spiritually, whether physically, whether emotionally. Let me tell you again. The God in which we serve is so great. He's going to bring us through. And whatever God does, he does best and he knows best. And so we need to lift up our eyes, lift up our head, and we need to rejoice and say, Lord, yes, I am overwhelmed by all of this, but I know that all of this is overwhelmed by your power power, by your wisdom, and by your bigness, the majesty of God. So this coming week, whatever, whatever comes, I know most individuals glued to the news to hear what's going on, what's going to transpire. But let's pray, and we're going to walk in victory. Through the power of the Lord, we are not the victims here. We are the victors. We're the victors. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now. And not only the church family of Mascuda First Assembly of God, but Father, others that may tune in, others that may listen, others that may watch. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to get our eyes off of what's going on around us and help us to get our eyes back upon you and how great you are. 
And Lord, that no matter what I face, no matter what we go through, no matter the severity of the need, even financially, you're going to protect us. You're going to provide for us. You're going to watch over us as we read in the text like a shepherd. You're going to lead us. You're going to take us into your loving arms and into your bosom. And Lord, you're going to love us. So God, I ask that you would do that right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I come against all fear. I come against anxieties. I come against angst. I, I come against trepidation. I come against, Lord, depression and discouragement. I come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. And that your people, as we look unto you, Lord, that we're going to be so encouraged. And a smile is going to break across our face because we know that my God that holds me in the hollow of his hand as well is the God that is greater than anything that comes my way. Bless your people. Give us the strength, Lord. Heal bodies that need to be healed. Strengthen others as you have promised. I ask it all in the wonderful and the holy and the authoritative name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you.